Um, my name is Sarah Bostic, and I'm the Sustainable Agriculture Extension Agent with the University of Florida in both Sarasota and DeSoto counties, which are um, down about halfway down, um, about halfway down the Gulf Coast side of Florida. Um, and I'm here with a couple of my coworkers, including Carol Wyatt Evans. Um, she and I are going to be um, taking turns throughout the next 10 weeks um, teaching different segments of this garden series. Um, and then we also have Mindy Hannock on the, on the call, um, who is our community and um, school garden coordinator in Sarasota County. So I'm going to dive right in um, into um, the very first of our edible garden season series classes. Um, and this, this topic is Florida growing seasons. Um, and this, this class series was really inspired by the fact that um, people come into our office all the time and tell us that I had a green thumb all of my life and then I moved to Florida and I lost it. I can't figure out how, how to grow things here. Um, and, it, and we're also starting to hear throughout the course of, um, of uh, so many folks working from home right now um, and having just a really different um, kind of life over the last few months um, that they've maybe lived in Florida all their lives but are just trying to garden for the first time and are really struggling to, to do it well. So that is the inspiration behind the series. And so I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes um, on this, um, really specifically on this topic. And then the next 20 minutes we'll have open for any and, any and all questions you might have about gardening. It doesn't have to be on this particular topic. So here we go. So I love maps. Um, I find this map to be actually incredibly helpful um, to this, this question of how do you grow, um, what do you, how do you grow, what do you grow in Florida? So this is called the Köppen-Geiger climate map. Um, and it basically color codes the world based on these three things, um, the main climate, precipitation, and the temperature. Um, and so I know this map, um, you can't really see how Florida really um, falls into this map, but you can see there's really distinct areas across the world. So this is what the map of the United States looks like in this Köppen-Geiger climate classification system. And you can see that Florida actually has three really different distinct colors in it. Um, and where we are located in, um, in Sarasota County, um, we're actually located exactly where the green meets the pink on this, um, on this map. Um, and for a lot of folks who are you know, moving from places like New England or the Midwest, this map um, really goes a long way to helping folks understand why, why, why doing things the same way you did in a different place um, doesn't work so well here. Um, so you can see um, that where we are in this bottom, you know, half-ish of, of Florida, the colors on this map are actually more similar to places like the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, um, the Caribbean islands, places like that, right? So it's just, we just have a really profoundly different kind of growing season and therefore a different kind of set of techniques to go into growing well down here. And I think it's also really helpful um, it's really, it's really helpful also to remember that we can't really um, generalize from the top to the bottom of Florida. Um, if you actually trace the mileage from top to bottom of Florida, not including the Florida Keys, um, it's basically the same distance mileage wise as from Portland, Maine to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right? And those are, those are two very different climates as well. So, um, so for resources to help you actually figure out how to grow well what, or what to grow when in Florida, this is actually one of my favorite resources. Um, it's directly off of um, a very well hidden um, web page uh, on the University of Florida's um, great big series of information web pages. Um, and it's a, a whole series of maps. Um, it's called Edibles to Plant in and then the month. Um, and they've got it broken up into the three, different, the three different zones of Florida, the north zone, the central zone, and the south zone. And you'll see that on some months, um, it's a relatively similar um, set of vegetables that you can grow, um, regardless of where you are in the state. So like, you know, in October, it's relatively similar um, across the state as to what you plant when. Here's January. Um, you know, for folks that have um, been living a long time in colder places or places that get a lot of frost, um, this can be a really shocking, um, a really shocking uh, map, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of things that you pl actually plant preferably in the middle of January. Um, and so one little side note on this also is that, you know, in, in Sarasota County, we are, we are literally right there where the central zone of Florida meets the south zone of Florida. And you could also see that on that 
Copen Geiger climate map, where we're where the green meets the pink, right? We are just kind of at this crossroads. And that's true of quite a few counties in, in Florida. Um, and so people who live kind of in these, um, these transition zones between different areas, um, some, some years they actually have better luck following one zone's planting guide and some, some years better luck planting another season, another zone's planting seasons. And then here, um, here's the map of June. Um, all, everything goes away, right? There's, there's almost nothing you can grow successfully in June in terms of edibles that are, that are also annual plants. Um, and so a good rule of thumb um, in general is that if it isn't okra or sweet potatoes, it pretty much doesn't grow in the summer in Florida. So Florida, Florida summer is really the time off for, for vegetable gardeners in the state. So if, you, if you're someone who really likes charts, um, this is actually a, um, it's kind of overwhelming to just see it on a computer screen, um, but it's actually an extremely well done chart with basically all the information that you need. Um, it goes through um, a few dozen of the most common vegetables you might grow. Um, and um, uh, it's the, if you can, if you wanna look it up online, um, you can type in the Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide um, it's an 11 page um, University of Florida publication. Um, it's actually really good. There's about two or three pages of, um, of charts just like this. And again, it breaks it down into that north, central and south um, planting times. And it tells you, you know, if you plant 10, 10 feet um, of, of whatever it is, how more or less, how much you'll get out of it. So it's, you know, it's a really, it's a really handy little chart. Um, other places you can go for resources to help you figure out when, when in the world you put things in the ground in Florida. Um, your local um, University of Florida Extension Office, um, that's a huge piece of what Extension Offices do. Um, it's just helping folks um, actually figure out um, how to garden successfully. Um, if you don't know where your local office is, um, you can actually just look up um, University of Florida Extension, find your local office. Um, if you type in that string of words, it'll pop up. And then I also find it really, really helpful to actually um, visit demonstration gardens of different sorts around Florida. Um, one, one that's really, really pretty amazing down in the, um, in the Fort Myers area is called um, Echo Global, Global Farm. Um, and they, they have um, a, a, like acres and acres, like a couple hundred acres of demonstrations of how, how you can grow things in different ways in Florida, which is pretty tremendous. And then most county extension offices also have a demo garden. Um, one thing that I would really um, highly recommend is that if you are um, looking at gardening books or YouTube videos or things like that to get your advice, um, take the information that you learn from those sources with a grain of salt. Um, so most of those resources kind of miss the mark for Florida. Um, Florida is so incredibly unique, especially the further south you get in Florida. Um, and I'll show you a couple of very Florida specific books in just a moment. But I also wanna point out that, um, you know, in, in general, seed packets are a great place to get your, your growing information from, um, unless you live in Florida. Um, so um, the instructions that are printed on the backs of seed packets, like you can see here, um, or on the tags of, um, of seedlings that you might get from like a big box store, um, the, the directions and the instructions on those are exactly the same regardless of where on this continent you live. So the same information is given for someone who's trying to garden in Miami as Montana, right? Another two wildly different growing climates. So right there, um, this is something you want to pay attention to. If you are trying to follow the directions on a seed packet and you see words like this, frost tolerant, so in spring or late summer, you know those directions are not made for Florida. Um, to, to pair the words frost tolerant and plant them in summer um, is a really good key to knowing that those are not Florida directions. So find a different source of information. Um, you know, and again, here we go. There's actually two sets of directions on this, on this side of the seed packet, including right here um, in mild climates. So in fall and winter for cool season harvest, that's a much better set of directions than the ones up here, which are plant four to six weeks before your average last frost date. Um, you know, the part of Florida that we live in hasn't gotten a frost for years, so those are not relevant directions. So this, to me, is one of the best books out there that is very specific to 
Gardening in Florida. It is actually called Vegetable Gardening in Florida. Um, if you stop by our Sarasota County office, um, we've got a stack um, of copies that, um, that we have available for folks. Um, you can also get this book through, um, through all sorts of online um, sources, including University of Florida's um, University of Florida um, IFAS Extension book Bookstore. It's about 100 pages long. It's a great guide. It's made for bit like gardeners in, in Florida. And again, over here, you can see it breaks it down to north, central, and south zones. Um, super handy book. So that is a super quick dive. Um, looks like I went one minute over what I intended. Um, and um, just to dive into the resources that help you figure out when to actually put things in the ground in Florida. So, so we are, um, we're a little over our plan time. Um, we want to thank all of you so very much for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed. This is a thank you all enormously, um, and hopefully we will see you next week. And feel free to reach out via phone or email anytime.